Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today in our webinar uh, on the implementation of BEPS Action 13 in Latin America. This is a presentation prepared by Belisa Severini, uh, who is in Argentina, by me, who I'm here in Amsterdam, by Jose Oceru, who is in the US, and by Ramon Lavada, who is in Mexico. So here you have our team of presenters. However, um, we counted with the participation of each of our alliance partners in, uh, in, our, in our LATAM uh, team um, in, in Latin America. As contents of uh, this webinar, I'll start by presenting our TPA Global LATAM Desk so that you see uh, where we have presence in Latin America, um, who, who is leading uh, our team in Latin America. I will then continue with the BEPS, uh, with our main topic, with the BEPS in Latin America, the implementation of BEPS Action 13 um, uh, in Latin America, and then we will finalize with the with the Q and A session where you can make us any questions to any of us or to any of our alliance partners who are already in the territory. So here we have uh, our team uh, who is led in. Uh, I'm here in Amsterdam. Then we had uh, we have Belisa Severini in Argentina. We have Jose Otero uh, in the US, and together we are coordinating our, our projects in Latin America. And then we have our several alliances in the Latin American countries. We have Ramon Lavada in Mexico, Claudio Salcedo in Chile, Jorge Ayala Romero and Jorge Valdivieso in Ecuador, Daniel Gade in Uruguay, and who's only co who is also covering Paraguay, Bolivia, and the Central American countries, Luis Ugarelli, who is in Peru, Alejandro Delgado, who is in Colombia, Edward Salas Alvarez, who is in Peru, Luis Enrique de Conceição and Felipe uh, de Albuquerque District uh, that are in Brazil, and uh, Nelson Landaeta, who is in Venezuela. So the implementation of BEPS Action 13 in Latin America. We will present you this um, as a general uh, introductory webinar of our Latin America desk. We will present you in each country how is the status of Action 13 and also their local uh, transfer pricing requirements. However, as I said from a general perspective, later on this year we are planning on having several webinars uh, where we will explain you in a more detailed way and eventually per country how the situation is. Starting by the specifications of Latin America as a region. Uh, in Latin America there are 21 countries and 10 dependencies two OECD members, which are Mexico and Chile, three G20 members, Argentina, Brazil, and Mexico. And it's good to keep in mind that there are differences between the countries, not only uh, on a global scale, but also within the Latin American region, starting by their tax laws, the capacity of their tax administration, their accounting system, their expertise level, their development level, etc. So we can already tell you that the BEPS plan as it is designed, does not fit all countries, as they each have their own particularities, which makes it difficult to apply a uniform set of tax measures. It's good to keep in mind that there's one uh, template for country-by-country uh, -country reporting by the C uh, for the CBCR. There are several uh, local uh, files or several templates for local files within countries, not only in Latin America, but globally, and various local forms, various types of local forms required in each country. But our key uh, message uh, throughout this webinar is that it would be fundamental to have one only template for the master files in order to be more efficient in organizing all the documentation that is necessary to be delivered. As we will see, all of these documents will be delivered as appendices to the corporate income tax return. So Belisa will um, make an agreement of a country uh, whereby she will explain how the implementation of BEPS was developed. Belisa? Yes, thank you, Rita. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thanks for attending this webinar. And uh, as mentioned by Berrita, uh, according to the, the status of uh, the implementation of the three tiers introduced by uh, Action 13 of the, of the BEPS project, uh, that is to say the master file, local file, and country by country report, uh, we have classified the Latin country uh, in the following way. First of all, uh, we, 
we classify Mexico uh, in, uh, since this country was the, the one the first one to introduce the, the country by country report, the master file and the local file, and uh, is the only one that has already begun implementing the BEPS element in the region. Uh, after that, we, we have another group uh, containing Colombia, Peru, and Uruguay, since uh, these three countries uh, introduced in December 2016, um, the, well, in the case of Colombia and Peru, the three tiers, and in the case uh, of Uruguay, uh, they introduced the country by country report and the master file. Um, these uh, elements were introduced in the general legislation, but it should be noted that uh, the, the regulation with all the, the details how to implement these uh, layers uh, is, is still pending. Uh, so there are a lot of, uh, of lack of information uh, for the taxpayer uh, how to uh, complete with all these requirements. Um, it should be noted that the country by country report and the master file uh, it's supposed that we, that they will be required for fiscal year 2017. Uh, that is to say, the uh, the taxpayers are obliged to deliver them uh, during the the year uh, 2018. And the local file, if, uh, in the cases of Peru and Colombia, uh, would be required uh, for fiscal year 2016. Uh, in addition, in a third group, we included Brazil and Chile, since both countries uh, introduced uh, the country by country report to be applied for fiscal year 2016 uh, and on, and the, the, the onwards. Uh, then uh, we have uh, in a separate box uh, Costa Rica, since uh, this country recently in April just, uh, this year, uh, introduced uh, a new regulation that requires uh, the taxpayer to retain uh, certain information that in fact is uh, very similar to uh, the, the information that uh, are required in the local file and the master file. And this information uh, it should be uh, maintained by the by the taxpayer and deliver uh, to the uh, tax authority you can request uh, in addition um, Costa Rica uh, has uh, intention uh, of implementing the country by country report uh, finally we have uh, all the the rest of the country since uh, in the rest of the country uh, there is uh, nothing implemented yet. There are some intention of implementing the country by country report in Argentina and in Panama. And also in the case of Argentina, there are some intention to introduce the master file. Um, well, after this uh, big uh, summary, uh, we, we are going to explain uh, the, in more detail the current situation in each country. Uh, starting with Argentina, uh, as we, we said uh, before, uh, there are all, uh, only intention to introduce the country by country report and the master file, but uh, there is nothing uh, implemented yet. Um, in Argentina, uh, like almost all the Latin countries, um, uh, tax authority uh, has not uh, this um, BEPS element as a priority uh, because the, um, in general uh, the, the, the companies located in, in this Latin country are uh, subsidiaries and not uh, the headquarters and also uh, if the threshold of the uh, seven, 750 million euros or the equivalent in local currency as assisted by the OECD uh, for, uh, for the, um, the stress for, uh, for in order to the taxpayer to be obliged to report the country by country report um, 
if this uh, threshold is applied, only a few companies would be obliged to comply with, with this. Um, uh, not only because there are uh, uh, a small number of headquarters uh, located in, in the region, but also um, this amount uh, became uh, really high for, for the dimension of the, the companies here in the region. Um, consequently, uh, the local tax authority uh, are more interested in the transfer pricing local requirements and in this sense, um, tax authority are conducting very aggressive uh, audit uh, to, to companies in, in all the countries um, asking for the local documentation. Um, in this sense, um, going back to, to the situation of Argentina, we can say that uh, um, in Argentina there are a lot of uh, transfer pricing uh, information requirements that a taxpayer have to, to, to prepare and submit to the tax authority. There are um, uh, transfer pricing informative return, including transaction with, with uh, um, local and, and with foreign uh, transaction performed with relative party. And also um, there are all uh, some uh, forms that require information about foreign transaction performed with third parties. Uh, in addition to the to the um, los transfer pricing uh, returns, a taxpayer has to prepare and submit every fiscal year a transfer pricing study um, with a, a lot of information about taxpayer, also the multinational group, the transactions, the, the economic analysis, and this study um, has to be submitted to tax authority uh, uh, with uh, certified by a, an independent accountant. Um, in addition, uh, in relation to the uh, the multilateral competent authority agreement and the exchange of country by country report, Argentina is a country that uh, signed it. Um, going to, to the next country, uh, we have the situation in Bolivia. Uh, Bolivia, uh, as opposite are, as Argentina, uh, the, there is um, the, the, the there is a very few uh, information requirements about transfer pricing. Uh, the transfer pricing is something very new in Bolivia. Only in 2014, uh, they introduced transfer pricing rules. And in April 2015, uh, a new resolution was enacted with the obligation to prepare a transfer pricing study and a transfer pricing informative return. Uh, for transactions performed with relative parties uh, located abroad. Uh, this obligation also depends on the amount of the transactions performed during the, the fiscal year uh, and uh, if the, the, the amount of the transactions are higher, uh, the obligation includes the submission of uh, the, the return and the transfer pricing study. For lower amount uh, of the transaction, the, the obligation consists of, of the, the submission of the transfer pricing return uh, and the transfer pricing study has to be prepared uh, but uh, not to submit. Only taxpayer needs to maintain it. And for lower amount, the, the obligation only consists to uh, maintain documentation uh, that prove that the transaction related parties were performed at arm length, uh, but there is no obligation to submit uh, the, the, the DP form or the TPS study. Uh, and in relation to the three layers uh, of Action 13, there is nothing introduced uh, yet. Uh, and this country uh, didn't sign this uh, agreement uh, on the exchange of country country report. Uh, next, we have the next country, uh, which is Brazil. Uh, Rita will, is going to, to explain the situation. Yes, thank you very much, Felisa. 
in Brazil, as we can see, there is only the CBCR. Uh, in fact, this is the very first time that Brazil is following an OECD initiative regarding transfer pricing documentation. Before, they had almost no TB TP documentation requirements. The CBCR came into force on the 31st of December 2016 and is applicable for fiscal years beginning on the 1st of January 2016. Companies will have to report before the 31st of December 2017. The CBCR applies when uh, the parent company in Brazil or the resident of Brazil when the parent company is in a jurisdiction which does not require the CBCR has a consolidated revenue of at least 2.26 billion of reais or 750 million euros or the equivalent in uh, local currency. But in reality, in Brazil, the CBCR is not directly seen as a real TP store of documentation. Uh, given that Brazil performs usually an analysis per company instead of per group. And because they don't require anything like uh, the master file, neither any group documentation. In any case, we can see the CBCR as a good tool, as a supporting tool for tax audits, both in Brazil and abroad. Other local uh, requirements, as we can see, uh, we have no master file, neither any local file requirements, but we have uh, the fiscal accounting bookkeeping that needs to be presented by the end of July of the following year and that is required from legal entities established in Brazil without any threshold, so to any legal entity. And actually the CBCR has to be filed together with its fiscal accounting bookkeeping and sent to the tax authorities, which are the SEDs, until the end of July of the following year. Then we also have supporting documentation for TP methods used and calculations performed. We have here no TP study, which is obligatory. However, we can recommend our clients there uh, just to prove their TP policies. And as we can see, Brazil has signed uh, the multilateral agreement on exchange of CBCR. Continuing with Chile, uh, in Chile also there's only the CBCR, as we can see. However, uh, we can say there's not really a big impact uh, as not many clients will have to present it. The CBCR in Chile uh, became effective since the 31st of December 2015 and applies to fiscal years beginning on the 1st of January 2016. Companies will have to report before the 30th of June 2017 and is applicable to groups with an annual consolidated, uh, consolidated revenue equal or exceeding the 750 million of euros in the previous year. Uh, this will be sent through a form that is part of the annual TP informative return, as we will see. If uh, the CBCR is not filed or filed light, there will be pen penalties for this. Uh, as we can see, there is nothing on uh, master file and yet only intentions on local file. Uh, we have no regulations on none of them, but taxpayers must be alert for this in case uh, any new regulations show up. There are intentions, in fact, of having a mandatory local file, as is required by OECD, and by saying this I mean that they already have a store of a local file, but is not mandatory. The plan is, require, is to require this local file through, for example, an appendix of the current annual uh, TP informative return. And other local requirements, as we can see, are the TP informative return that is presented annually uh, in June, and the new declaration on global tax characterization, which is actually the recommended by OECD and which has different edges in the BEPS plan. This will be used for the characterization of large uh, taxpayers, uh, and it must be presented by December 31st. Then. Um, we can also here recommend a TP study to our clients uh, just to prove their TP policies. However, this is not mandatory in Chile. Uh, as a last point, as we can see, we have the, the multilateral agreement on exchange of uh, CBCR, which was also signed by Chile. Continuing now with Colombia. In Colombia, we can already see some differences uh, from the other countries. We have here the CBCR, the master file, and the local file, which were introduced into a general law. However, we have no regulation so far 
on none of them with further detail. In fact, uh, we can say that Colombia is behaving as a sort of, of the best student in class as it is making its way to become an OECD member. The truth is that uh, Colombia has excessive TP documentation being required. Um, and I mean that they have more than what they actually need there. And they never go too much in detail in what, th what they actually need detail in. And the CBCR and the master file will not affect many companies in Colombia. Uh, I would say only about 10, so its utility is quite reduced there. The master file will apply starting uh, by operations carried out in 2017 and the CBCR for operations carried out in 2016 and following years. Although, as I mentioned, there is no regulations about this yet. We can expect such regulations in uh, around 2018, so in about a year's time. There's other priorities for now. The local file is already required for 2016, and it is very similar to what they already had before. So they're basically just following the old requirements now, uh, which are also very similar to BEPS. We have other local requirements, which are the TP informative return that corresponds to the operations with related parties or parties in tax havens, and the TP study. Now, yes, in he here it's obligatory, and to show that the prices negotiated are in line with the market prices. Uh, Colombia, however, um, although in inserting the CBCR into general legislation, has not signed uh, the multilateral agreement on exchange of uh, CBCR. Now Costa Rica. Um, in Costa Rica, there's actually nothing for now. However, similar to Colombia, Costa Rica has intentions of becoming an OECD member. However, uh, Costa Rica does not have uh, sufficient requirements to become one, such as like Colombia, but has even less uh, um, requirements uh, than Colombia at this stage. So Costa Rica has made some moves. Towards, towards these intentions and has already expressed its intentions to implement the, the CBCR, as we can see. Then, also, as, as Felicia explained in the very beginning, since April 2017, there is a new documentation requirement at a group level, um, which is sort of equivalent to the, to the master file. And also since April 2017, uh, there's also a new requirement for disposing data in relation to local entities, which is very similar to the local file. Then we also have other local requirements, uh, which are the TP informative return and the TP study, here also um, as obligatory, to show that uh, such transactions were carried out at market value. Costa Rica, however, has signed a multilateral agreement on exchange of CBCR. We can see this as a big sign of moving towards the, the CBCR itself and of implementing it in the future. Now Ecuador. In Ecuador, um, there's no news about when the CBCR, the master file, and the local file will be implemented. Eventually also two years time, as this is a very political subject, and for now their government does not seem very interested in following the BEPS plan. And even for audits in Ecuador, tax authorities often go against the, the OECD's views. Other local requirements, uh, there are other local requirements, which are the TP informative return, uh, which is uh, an annex to the, to the corporate tax return, for transactions exceeding the 3 million of uh, US dollars of contributed revenue. And this annex has mainly information of the transactions, methodologies used, and the related parties involved. And then a TP study uh, for bigger transactions, for tr transactions exceeding the 50 million of uh, US dollars of contributed revenue. Uh, with the methodology and the adjustments of transfer prices charged by the taxpayer. These, both of these uh, documents must be presented within the two months following the date of presenting the tax return, which normally occurs uh, on April of the following year. Here, given that uh, Action 13 has not been implemented in Ecuador, we see that there are various differences between these uh, local documentation and uh, what o OECD uh, actually requires in Action 13. Finally, as a last point, we see that Ecuador has not signed the multilateral agreement on exchange of CBCR. 
continuing now with uh, El Salvador. In El Salvador, uh, equally as in Ecuador, there is nothing, nor the implementation of Action 13 can be expected soon. However, there's, um, there are other local requirements, which are the TP informative return as well, obligatory, and a TP study with prices used for transactions with related parties or parties domiciled in tax havens uh, that needs to be available upon request. In this case, it's not obligatory to deliver, only when it's required by the tax authority. Here also, uh, given that Action 13 was not implemented, there are several differences between these documents and what is required in Action 13 by OECD. And to finalize about El Salvador, we see that uh, it has not signed a multilateral agreement on exchange of CBCR either. Continuing with uh, Guatemala now. Uh, also in Guatemala, there is nothing, nor the implementation of Action 13 is expected anytime soon. And actually, they only have transfer pricing rules uh, since uh, January 2015 only. So it's quite recent. However, they have other local requirements at the moment, which are the, the, an annex that needs to be presented together with the annual tax return, uh, which is called the annex for transaction, transactions with the related parties, and a TP study with information that needs to be prepared both at group level and also concerning the, the local tax buyers. This means that we can see this as a sort of a mix of master file and a local file. However, we, Action 13 was not implemented in Guatemala, and we also know that uh, Action 13 structures this type of documentation differently. It separates group level and local level in the master file and, and local file. Um, in any case, uh, um, besides this, there's not m many similarities uh, between these documents. Um, about the multilateral agreement on exchange of CBCR, Guatemala has not signed it either. Now in Honduras, um, Honduras also has nothing. Uh, neither we should expect uh, the, the implementation of Action 13 soon. And they also a bit earlier than, uh, than uh, Guatemala, but they also only have a TP rules since January 2014. They have other local requirements, which are the, the TP informative return and the, the TP study, but also only when requested by the tax authority, so not mandatorily to, to deliver right away. Uh, there are some similarities between what should be reported in Honduras and what the OECD requires in Action 13, maybe a little more than the, the two countries before but there are still some differences. For example, there is no economic analysis in, in, in this last document. Um, Ramon will continue uh, with Mexico. Yes, thank you, Rita. Uh, thank as you. You, you may know, uh, Mexico has been one of the countries that first introduced uh, transfer pricing regulations in the region, and uh, this uh, Action 13 uh, is not the exception. Uh, as you may know, uh, uh, 2016 is the first year that companies are required to report for these purposes, and the deadline is uh, December 31st of, of this year to file this information referring to 2016. Uh, we have the, the three layers of, of the uh, returns required, the country by country, the master file, and the local file. Uh, as you uh, may know, uh, in Mexico we also have a, a, a huge number of uh, local groups that conduct an uh, important amount of transactions within the country that are, that are also required to, to present at least, for example, the master and local file uh, to uh, inform this type of, of operations and the situation with the tax authorities. Um, it's uh, important to, to remember that uh, the requirement for the master file and local file applies to companies with income that exceeds uh, 30, 36 million US dollars and in the case of the country by country reporting uh, we will be talking about uh, companies that, ex that their income exceeds 630,000 uh, million dollars. 
so we have a good number of uh, of companies that will be required now to file these uh, uh, returns. Uh, the other uh, uh, requirements in Mexico are continue to to be applied. For example, the transfer pricing documentation that, as you may know, is uh, uh, contemporaneous documentation uh, that you need to to keep in your files upon request by the tax authorities. But also, you have the obligation to file other uh, transfer pricing informative returns that have no no change uh, because of these uh, new uh, returns. Also, Mexico uh, has entered the agreement to ex exchange of information on CBCR. And one important uh, point here is that also it is included uh, in a specific regulation in our law that allows the tax authorities to directly request the country-by-country uh, -country return in case they, they, they need it or probably they do not have uh, success obtaining it uh, without uh, any other the, the procedures established. Uh, this is important because they can go directly with, with the company even when they are uh, a subsidiary that probably locally is not uh, obliged to, to present this information, but if they are uh, anywhere else obliged, they can request it. And uh, finally, uh, remember that because of the size of the companies that will be required to file this, in order in other uh, filings that they have to, to submit with the tax authorities, for example, uh, the Tamil Fiscal uh, Tax Report, they will have to uh, include uh, an information regarding this type of, of uh, new requirements. At least they have to reveal if they are aware of the existence of this documentation in other jurisdictions. So basically this is uh, ah, and one last uh, important issue. The, the, the um, a platform that will be used to, to include this information with the tax authorities is pending to be released. Uh, there is no specific date for this, but it is pending to, to be released. And uh, this is the, the situation for Mexico. Jose, you will follow with Nicaragua? Sure. Yeah, thanks for that, Ramon, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, following with the order of the presentation, uh, yeah, you're right, the next country to talk about is Nicaragua. Um, Nicaragua is one of those countries that has not incorporated yet any of the BEPS elements. Um, but regarding the transfer pricing documentation rules, uh, it must be mentioned that um, back in December 2012, the transfer pricing rules um, were incorporated to the law 8-2020, sorry. And uh, this law established that um, these rules will apply from 1st of January 2016. Um, but given the disagreement of the private sector with respect to this new obligation, um, a reform to these measures was approved and uh, setting up a new date of obligation for June 30, 2070. So that's going to be like in 18 days. Um, based on this, um, based on this legislation, um, um, should be uh, the documentation should be available at the time of the filing uh, the tax return. However, the taxpayer must only provide the documentation required at the request of the tax administration. So um, moving to the next country on the list, which is Panama. As you can see, um, as you can see in the slide, uh, Panama is also one of the countries that has no implement the BEPS element. Um, however, Panama is now implementing its commitment to cooperate with the international community on, on transparency. And uh, actually, the Global Forum of Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes um, published an assessment on how Panama, um, so how Panama's legal framework uh, over the last three years are matching up the international standards. And um, another example of this is that Panama recently 
signed the, multi the multilateral convention of mutual administrative assistance in tax matter. So, uh, I mean, based, based on this, um, this attitude, there are opinions on, on the country by country reporting will be incorporated in the legislation at some point. However, um, it will not be easy to implement it. As this will require uh, a previous modification of the internal legislation. Um, so regarding the, the current transfer legislation, uh, the taxpayer at this point has to file um, the form 930, identifying the, the company transactions carried out during the fiscal year. And on top of that, uh, transfer pricing local documentation report has to be prepared and be available in case the tax administration will require it. Um, so the next country on the list is Paraguay. Um, so we can move forward in the presentation. Yeah, thank you. So Paraguay is, um, is not a member of the OECD and, and uh, has not implemented any of the BEPS elements here. Uh, however, as far as we know, the OECD is um, actually in touch with the government in order to get the country on board. And if that would be the case, maybe uh, the best element, best elements could be implemented maybe all at a, all at a time, or, or we will see what happens. Uh, currently, uh, the local taxpayers has to prepare this local transfer pricing documentation supporting the value of the intercompany transactions. Uh, for each um, fiscal year. And uh, the next slide is showing the snapshot for um, Dominican Republic. Um, so in this country, as of today, BEPS elements has not been implemented. Um, the last change on the transfer pricing legislation took place on March 2014. And this new regulation establishes how the transfer pricing documentation has to be prepared by the taxpayer. Uh, based on, the, on this legislation, the local documentation should be available at the time of the filing of the tax return. But um, the taxpayer must only provide this documentation required at the request of the tax administration. So uh, this is all on my side, Rita. So I pass it over to you. Thank you very much, Jose. Belisa, would you like con to continue with Peru? Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, well, we have uh, Peru uh, now. Um, this country uh, introduced a new uh, law uh, in December 2016, uh, introducing the, the requirement of uh, the three layer of Action 13, uh, country by country report, master file, and local file. Uh, however, uh, the regulation uh, with further details about how to apply those requirements is still missing. So um, there are some some information that already uh, is known and some information that is expected to, to be applied, but with, uh, we have no certainty. Uh, in the case of the country by country report, for example, uh, there are uh, no threshold uh, um, defined yet uh, to um, uh, in, indicating uh, if the taxpayer has to fill it or not. Uh, in, in the case of the master file, it is supposed that uh, it should be um, completed by taxpayers taxpayer uh, who are part of a multinational group whose income uh, are uh, greater than uh, approximately uh, uh, 20 million US dollar. Uh, and in the case of the local file, uh, it is supposed that uh, it will apply for taxpayer with income uh, exceeding uh, 2.3 million uh, dollar approximately. Uh, in the case of the country by country report and the master file, uh, it could um, they could apply for fiscal year 2017. Uh, that is to say that uh, it will be required as from year 2018. And uh, it is expected that the OECD template uh, could apply for, uh, to complete the information. Uh, and the, the information uh, for the three layers should be in Spanish. 
Um, in the case of the local file, it is supposed that it could apply for fiscal year 2016. Uh, but uh, as we, we mentioned before, uh, the regulation is still missing. So uh, the situation of the current local transfer pricing requirement is um, uh, for fiscal year 2015 and before uh, the, the current uh, obligation for the taxpayer would be as uh, it is now, uh, uh, that taxpayer needs to to prepare and submit a transfer pricing informative return and a transfer pricing study. Uh, for fiscal year 2016 uh, and and after, a uh, taxpayer uh, will have to uh, prepare a local file for substantial transactions. However, um, for the time being and until uh, further regulation is launched, uh, the formal obligation related to fiscal year 2016 uh, should, uh, should be um, as uh, as it is now with the the local requirement that is to say taxpayer have to to prepare the the transfer pricing uh, form and the transfer pricing study and uh, as in the, in the previous years and when the the regulation uh, is uh, enacted uh, the the taxpayer should uh, adapt the information uh, to to be consistent with the local file requirement. Uh, in a sense, the information uh, should be more or less the same, uh, but uh, um, probably uh, th there, are, there could be some other information that need to be adapted. Uh, and for fiscal year 2017 and after, uh, the, the three layer will be uh, required. That is um, a local file, the master file, and the country by country report. Um, well, uh, this is the, the situation for Peru. And finally, uh, and uh, in relation to the multilateral agreement, this country hasn't signed yet. Um, then uh, the next um, country uh, we have is Uruguay. Uh, in Uruguay, um, uh, the same in December 2016, they introduced new rules uh, introducing the obligation to fill the country by country report and the master file. In this case, uh, there is no uh, obligation to, to present the the local file return. Um, the, in this uh, country, um, the, these elements were introduced in the general legislation, but uh, um, the regulation is still missing. So um, again, there, there are a lot of uh, information that is missing about how to to prepare and, and to comply with the, this uh, new element. Uh, these proposed measures uh, will apply to fiscal year 2017 to be submitted during uh, 2018. Um, and as we said, there are a lot of information that is missing, like the revenue threshold or the filling language that has uh, that have not been determined yet. And uh, it is anticipated that the OECD uh, template could apply. Um, uh, but uh, as we mentioned before, tax authority in Uruguay are more interested in controlling the transfer pricing local requirement. And there are a lot of uh, uh, current audit be being in place. And so uh, these uh, BEPS elements are not really uh, a big priority for the tax authority. Um, the, in the case of the local requirements being in place uh, nowadays, um, the, the taxpayer has to, to prepare and to submit a transfer pricing informative return and a transfer pricing study. Um, that depends on the amount of the total transaction subject to the transfer pricing rules. Uh, taxpayer with higher amount of transaction have to prepare and to submit the, the 
transfer price in return and the transfer price in a study. Uh, and those uh, taxpayers with lower amount, lower amount of transaction, uh, the obligation is only to, to prepare and maintain, but not to uh, submit uh, the, the documentation. Uh, and this country uh, signed the, the multilateral agreement on the exchange of country by country report. Um, finally, we have uh, Venezuela. Uh, Venezuela is uh, a country that uh, have not implemented any of the three layers of the Ac Action 13 and uh, the local requirements um, are uh, still the, the transfer pricing informative return and the transfer pricing study it's only um, the, the obligation is only to prepare and maintain uh, just in case the tax authority uh, asks for it, but it is not compulsory to submit it. Um, well, this country uh, hasn't signed the, the multilateral agreement on the exchange of country by country report. Uh, well, this is, is the, the last uh, country um, in the Latin region and now um, Rita is going to to make like a, a, a conclusion of what we, we see up to now. Yes, thank you very much, Valisa, Jose, Ramon. Uh, what to do? What can we tell our clients to do at the moment? First of all, to put more emphasis in the number of employees, the functions assumed, the, risk, the risks attributed to each group company, and on its asset management, as this is key at the moment with BEPS, um, review their existing documentation and ensure that the prices that they negotiate with related parties are in accordance with the current substance. And lastly, and as I was said, as I said also in the very beginning, uh, this is our key message here. Um, we have to keep in mind that the TP documentation required locally is delivered as appendices to the corporate income tax return. So ideally, um, and as I explained, we do have one template for the, for the TBCR, and ideally we should have this very one template, so the same template or almost the same template per country. Um, it's okay to, to have various templates on the local files, it's okay to, they should be always based on the, on what OECD requires on Action 13, but it's okay to adjust it to, to every country's needs. Um, as we know, countries uh, have their own particularities and some countries, for example, have more tax fraud or some others really depend on this type of documentation to, to obtain information about their taxpayers, so they need to require more in this case. And we saw that there's various local forms. They don't all have the same content. They, they vary their content per country. It's still similar in some ways, but the, contract, uh, the content varies um, and adjusts to, to, to each country's needs, basically. But there should be only one uh, master file template for whole Latin America. And uh, why do I say this? First of all, because it would be much easier to organize all the appendices if we would only have one, um, one uh, template of a master file to have a, a call, let's say, a pan Latin master file, and to have more coherence in the, of the information in the various countries. We cannot forget that the master file is one per group. It's a group file. So uh, having more consistency will allow also for, for less risk of penalties for the taxpayers. And uh, for the tax authorities to, to obtain information will be much easier. So basically, I'll say that everyone will win with this. Also, um, as we saw, the most countries already have a local file. Even if they don't have the local file as it is required by the OECD, they already have uh, TP documentation, TP requirements, local requirements that are very similar to what BEPS Action 13 um, already requires. Let's say some of them have 70% of the elements, others have 90, so it varies, of course, but uh, a lot of information is the same. So if when they prepare these local documentation, these local files, these uh, TP reports, whatever they want to call it, but if they can leverage from this master file, 
as being one for the whole group, this will be much easier to prepare as well. So this is our message here, and uh, we hope to, to give consistency uh, to our clients when preparing this type of documentation, and only keeping in mind um, the coherence and the consistency that should exist in between these, uh, these various types of documents. So now it's the time for you to make us any question you would like to any of us, the speakers. Uh, I would like to appreciate very much to, to all the organizers of this webinar, uh, Belisa, Jose, Ramon, as well as to all our alliance partners in Latin America. If you have um, any specific question um, about any, any country in particular, you can address it directly to one of our alliance partners who um, more than any of us will be delighted to, to answer to you. Um, so far, no questions. Any comments about the uh, implementation of other BEPS actions uh, of the region? Um, in Peru, there are legislation on action 8 and 10. Yes, um, absolutely. As I, as I uh, said, and this was uh, one of our key messages in the end, um, it's, it's um, quite important to put some emphasis in the functions assumed and the risks attributed to to each group company because um, we we need uh, to when we make uh, some profit allocation we need to make sure that uh, the reality actually re corresponds to what is attributed to each entity so uh, we need to make sure that when we structure a whole group of companies um, we we need to keep this in mind so um, this will be always reported in a TP documentation so we can even say that these actions Action 8 to 10 and Action 13 are quite uh, related in this aspect, so uh, this is fundamental, of course. I don't know if uh, any of the other speakers have anything to comment on this. Belisa, Jose, Ramon? Not on my side. I think, yeah, you're right on that. Okay. Belisa? Uh, no, I say, come on, like um, you, you explained, I think it, it, it's okay. Thank you. Well, just to, to summarize then, um, whatever... Uh, we, however we structure the group, we need to make sure that it corresponds to reality and corresponds to what we are affirming in all of these TP uh, documents. So um, everything needs to be in line and in line with substance and in line with the, with the operations, in line with the, with the profits that are being allocated to each company. So everything will be now reported. and we need to make sure it corresponds to what actually happened. Well, um, we will then appreciate very much uh, your time here today with us and any other questions that uh, you may have uh, further to, to this webinar, we'll be delighted to respond to you. You can always um, contact us uh, via email or, or by phone. You can find our contact details uh, in, the, in our website, in the Latin desk part. Um, so we'll be very happy to answer to, to any of your questions in the future. Uh, thank you very much again, once again, Belisa, Jose, Ramon, all the Our Alliance partners who collaborated in, uh, in making this uh, uh, general uh, review of, uh, of how TP documentation is being processed and uh, implemented in uh, Latin America. And uh, I hope to hear from you soon, anyone in the audience. Thank you very much.